Hello friend, we're going after the gardener's holy grail, a slug proof veg patch. Settle in and we'll show you how to make an unusual raised bed from chainsaw milling off cuts that's durable and slug proof, hopefully. These were just branches of oak that were destined for firewood. It's enjoyable to cut with the grain in this way. The chain just creates these really long ribbons and as long as the saw doesn't bog down it cuts really well. In comparison to typical chainsaw milling when you're cutting across the grain it's a bit faster and much less dusty. This is the 48 inch guide bar I use for milling. It rarely gets used freehand and it's quite stimulating when it does. Mm, it's kind of square. I guess we're stopping for a bit then. While the rocket stove was warming up and Sam was busy putting tips onto those posts, I got my cyborg mask on and did a little bit of chainsaw milling. When you stack and store timber to be dried, the top and bottom slabs are always a bit problematic. But those round faced slabs can be really ideal for projects like this that don't need dried timber. The half round slab wood can really vary in its thickness and shape and in this application that doesn't matter too much because we'll be putting the half round towards the soil. If you caught our last video, you'll know pretty much all there is to know about the purpose and means of charring to preserve wood. By now you might be thinking, flowering elbow, what's going to make this particularly slug proof? Isn't it just a fairly standard raised bed? Well, here's where we put the foundation for that slug proofiness in. At the same time, we're going to put a line of best fit along the wany edged boards so we can make nice neat mitre joints. Good. 
recall that we're going to have the flat face of this slab wood facing outwards. Also notice the angle we're cutting these lines of best fit at. They're at 45 degrees and they're only about an inch or 25 millimeters deep. Quiz question. What can we do with a very square, big, right angle triangle? It's made from some oak boards and plywood. And we're trying to make sure it's strong and stiff enough to resist twisting and bending in almost all directions, even when quite a bit of force is applied. If you guessed the torso of a fighting robot, just wait, there's more information. We're combining it with this chainsaw milling, vertical chainsaw milling attachment that I spoke of in the last video. You guessed it, right? It's a big Frankenstein mitering jig for the chainsaw that can cut really quite large slabs. At least with a few tweaks it will be able to. The way it works is really rather simple. It just clamps along the face of the board we want to cut in line with the line of best fit. And then away you go cutting the mitre. It pivots around the pole that's part of the vertical milling jig. And that bit works really quite well. And there's very little slop or play in the motion. For these raised beds we're charring the inside faces that are going to be in contact with the soil and more importantly at the interface of the soil and the air. We fancied having the outer face just plain wood just for aesthetic purposes. In the corners we're just lining up the grooves we cut or the foundation for the anti-slug defences and the screws are just to temporarily hold things together. It doesn't really matter if the bottoms of the raised sides are exactly parallel with the ground and in continuous contact. We could have dug them down a little bit but we thought it was easier to put stones and other things in the inside just to block up little holes Nice, and that proved yeah. to work quite well. Mm -hmm. The corner posts are really mainly just to hold together the mitres as a joint so they don't have to go deep down at all really. The whole structure is not going anywhere as soon as it becomes filled with earth.
you'll see the scraps of popper pipe here uh, simply to protect the wood at these joints where otherwise wire would really dig into the end of the wood and potentially sort of split it. This is just the wire tensioning system I talked a bit about when I was doing the vegetable oil conversion van video. I thought it would be interesting to try it on something other than a fuel or coolant hose. And the extreme tension you can get on it does seem to lock the whole structure together nicely. <laughs> We've laid the groundwork, now let's get to the slug protection part of this raised bed. We're going to need some strips of oak that are the same thickness as the diameter of the saw blade we used to cut these channels earlier. Now if you've been screaming at the video all along, there's no such thing as slug proof, you might be right but 45 degrees is supposed to be this magic angle that slugs can't go all the way around and not just drop off if they're climbing up. I guess we'll have to do a round two video on this subject because I'm not sure exactly what the results are going to be. It's been a couple of months now and so far it's looking good. It's an idea we're trying and I thought it'd be nice to share it. If you found any of this intriguing be our most welcome guest and check out some of the other videos on this channel. For now, thanks for watching. Big fat slugs not welcome in the vegetable garden. Got to go. <laughs> Where did it go? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's on the back of the thing. <laughs> <laughs>